and stuff on on those guys. So oh, very cool. I like that. Oh man, I think we might be back on Facebook Live. Are we yeah, yeah, we're back on. Oh, we're, we're back, back on. on. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Jess, I'm sorry you missed the entire GTA story. You have to download tomorrow <laughs> off SoundCloud or uh, Downcast or something like that and listen to the entire story. Uh, Vic, did you want to bring us through some uh, of the... I think, oh. I think it's a brand new live stream. So yeah, yeah, That one is cut off. Yeah. Um, you're going to have to exit and uh, join the new one. They'll figure it out. I mean, I think Sorry, I can guys. I got a no- another notification that I'm live, so... It's cool. Dang it, Carl. <laughs> hey. Hey, growing pains, growing pains. That's all right. Man, how much closer is this camera to me now? God, this is so weird. <laughs> uh, Vic, did you want to bring us through some of the uh, items of interest? Yes. Got a few headlines here interest right here. Uh, first up, uh, Jackie Chan is to receive an honorary Oscar this year. Uh, 62-year-old living legend. Uh, he's going to receive a Lifetime Achievement Oscar at the uh, 8th Annual Academy's Governor Awards this November. And other recipients include Anne Coates of Lawrence of Arabia. She was the film editor of that film. Uh, Lynn Stallmaster, a casting director. And of course, legend doc- legendary documentary filmmaker Frederick Wiseman. What is the last movie that Jackie Chan did? I mean, I love Jackie Chan. I heard he was in Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> no, I'm dead I think he means live action, Carl. Oh, live action, live action. Yes, he's in Kung Fu Panda. Wait, tech, hey, that is a movie. That is a movie. <laughs> what movie does he do? Oh, Jimmy he's Karate. been in a bunch of Hong Kong films. Okay. He has like a music career there too, right? Does he? Yeah, I have no like idea. He's a legit, legit, legit musician. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. I think he's teaching a college class too. Oh, wow. Oh, good. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, Jackie Chan, big time. I love Jackie oh, yeah. Chan. Got to love Jackie Chan. So there, was a, there was one period they used to play cool. movies on TV all the time. And, yep. you know, back before HBO and stuff, you'd see all that. Uh, that was wonderful. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I'm getting feedback saying that we should interact with the viewers more. Well, that's not my job, now is it? We are recording here, and it, I mean, it is a podcast. Right. But, you know, we, we should we should get some, some more interaction with the light, live crowd. Okay. So, I mean, Carl dropped us out there for a while. <laughs> People get back on, please, you know, start, uh, you know what? Nope. We've been talking about what we've been up to and all the topics here, but we haven't even asked our live audience what you know what what if they have any recommendations, anything that they want to talk about. Like we said, growing pains. Well, we'll get there. Yeah. We'll get if it. you have any uh, games or books or anything you want to drop, um, well, there's a few things you can do. You can obviously hit us up on the Facebook Live. We have our email at quarterspinepodcast at gmail dot com. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're at Twitter at quarterspinecast, and obviously the Facebook which is Facebook Live Quarterspine Podcast. So, a lot of places to find us. Facebook, this, this Facebook Live is, is legit. For a long time, we talked about doing the, the Periscope and other type of live options, but the Facebook Live was just super convenient. Yeah. And uh, embedding all this stuff into YouTube is kind of a pain in the butt. Really? But yeah. Can you do Facebook Live now? I mean, freaking uh, YouTube Live? Can you? Yeah, you can. Pretty sure that's a thing. It is. Wow. It is. We'll get I there. Mean, you could literally do both, probably. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get. I mean, we only have one no guest here. We're not gonna have ourselves, okay? All right, all right, all right, all right. Um, but yeah, this was from when we hit the big time. Yeah, this is cool, man. This looks legit, Carl. Bro. You did nice work. Um, Good job, Carl. Seriously. So yeah, if any, any uh, anything pops up, we'll um, we might you know with the growing page, we'll maybe get to it at the end of the show. But definitely throw some stuff out there, uh, Carl. If you see anything of worthy note, it better be good, listeners. I swear. <laughs> I'm well, Vilma says, "Why are you all getting on Vic? He is the best." Yeah. What? <laughs> that's right. Thank you, Vilma. Man, you're way too nice. What was that part about you? I mean, that's why I love best. you. That's why I love you. But that, that's all sympathy. That's, <laughs> that's just that's just false. <laughs> <laughs> she is very nice. She is one of the nice people. We really just like way down. Uh, <laughs> it's really the news. It's really the news. This is, this is uh, time to shine. What do we got next, Vic? Yeah, crabs in a barrel over here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, also, I believe uh, Jackie Chan is the uh, main character in an animated film that may already be out. I don't know. It's called Monkey King. Hero is back. It looks terrible. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Sorry. I love you, Jackie Chan. Drunken Master. That was cool. <laughs> yeah. Brought the little Bronx. All right. Yeah, Robert yeah. the Bronx was awesome. Yeah, it was. All right. So, yeah. Next headline, uh, Deathstroke has been confirmed to be the main villain of Ben Affleck's solo Batman film. Now, there was a teaser, uh, some test footage that came out a couple weeks ago on YouTube showing uh, Deathstroke just walking towards the camera. So it's going to be interesting to see him be a main villain in a Batman film. What do you guys think? 
after this, I have mixed feelings, as per usual, with the DCEU. <clears throat> now, I love Deathstroke. I love Deathstroke a lot. Uh, but more, for my, in my history, he's more of a Teen Titans villain, mostly from the... He was, I think his first appearance was in Teen Titans, the comic, and he was obviously well-known for playing Slade in um, Teen Titans, the animated show, which I loved. I used to watch for school every morning. Um, fun fact, he was Deathstroke the Terminator, and he was actually before the Terminator Terminator. What? Really? Yeah. Weird. He premiered before Arnold Schwarzenegger's Terminator. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, two completely different things. Right, but they dropped that part of his name yeah. because, because of that. Because of Terminator? Yep. And also, a, uh, what the heck is this? Deadpool is a legit ripoff of Slade Wilson, which is why his name is Wade Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, he's an awesome villain. Deadpool is way cooler. <laughs> he's pretty cool. Uh, I'm glad they're doing a different villain than your normal Joker, all, you know, his main guys. Um, but I just, in my eyes, it's just, oh, DCU, save him for a Teen Titans movie, which you guys could totally do, or a Nightwing, I don't know, I just, I'm looking, ugh, I hate it, God, someone else talk. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I'm cool with Deathstroke in a Batman movie, I think that they're, it's kind of, it, it points to me, or it tells me that it's pointing towards a grittier feel yeah. to the movie. Not that you know the the Nolan Batman movies were not mm-hmm. gritty, but maybe they're they're going for a more mature take on it yeah. and maybe more violent. Obviously, because he is a literally a hitman. Yeah, he he is a killer. Mercenary. Right. There's a reason why Arrow season two was the best season. He was yeah. really good because in Deathstroke was the main yeah, villain. Deathstroke was awesome in that. But now, again, I'm an Arrow fan, and he's not going to be in future seasons, probably because of this. I think Carl has his hand up. What's up, Carl? Oh, just... How would they adjust the character since he was super hilarious? Your wife wants to know. I'm sorry, say that again? How would they adjust the character since he was super hilarious? I think she's super hilarious, hilarious Carl. Carl. <laughs> <laughs> I thought hey, hilarious was something. Listen, I don't follow DC. What Which character? I'm... That is a good question. Why did you ask that, Carl? Because that's what she asked. Why oh, you, you got the keyboard, Carl Bird! You have the keyboard! Hilarious, <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Carl, you gotta keep rich. up here, man. Like, Listen. we're talking and we're... We Listen, talk, I'm trying to do both. I'm trying to do both things. things. <laughs> so, you gotta... gotta... help us out here, Carl. <laughs> Alright, Vic, go you're, ahead, you're man. You're still the best. You're still the best, Carl Bird. Don't worry. Uh, one oh. last thing before that. Um, <laughs> with uh, with death, Deathstroke... Um, Arkham Origins, which is the redheaded stepchild of the Arkham series, mm-hmm. yep. he was the main villain in that, and the boss fight was the best part of that entire game. And mm-hmm. one of the main reasons I'm sad about uh, Arkham Knight is because Deathstroke is teased in it, and his fight is a huge bummer. Because they, oh. they could have done a lot more with him. That sucks. Yep. yep. Okay. Interesting, interesting. Uh, some other comic book related news. Uh, Marvel is developing a new Warriors TV series featuring Squirrel Girl. So, Get out of here. Yeah. That's a real thing? Uh, it's uh, it's about to be. Um, apparently, Marvel and ABC Studios, they're shopping around uh, their, their show, which is going to be a half-hour comedy. They're, sh- they're shopping it around to cable and streaming outlets like Netflix. Is it in the MCU? Um, yes. Oh, I'll probably watch it then. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I watch everything. How's the uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. going, Carl Bird? I have not. Wa- I just stopped because other things came on. Sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you go to Netflix, that's what the beauty of Netflix is. Yeah. Like I said, I'll be getting around to that eventually, at some point. I did hear that um, Ward, was the main character, what's the character's name? Yeah, Agent Ward. Agent Ward, he's going to be at Rhode Island Comic Con. Yeah, so oh, that's cool. If you're a big fan of that guy. Cool. Will we be at Rhode Island Comic Con? <laughs> Stay tuned. TBD. To be decided. Yeah. yeah. Uh, other news, uh, Sony PlayStation Plus users, we're getting some free games th- this month. Uh, PS4 owners, we get, we're getting Journey. Are any of them Overwatch? No. Then I don't care. <laughs> well, for the other PS4 owners out there, you're getting Journey and Lords of the Fallen, aka okay. not, not Dark Souls, huh. on the PS4 for free. Uh, PS3 users get Prince of Persia, The Forgotten Sands. It's a good game, I did play that. Yep. And the Torah. And PS Vita owners, all two of you out there, <laughs> you're getting Badland and Amnesia Memories. Uh, I've actually been interested in that Lords of the Call of Fallen for a while, so I will be yeah. checking that out, actually. I will, I will too. Journey. Take a heads up. Journey's really good. Yeah. If you've never played Journey, 
you owe it to yourself to play that. That's really, especially for free. Are you kidding me? Right. Yeah. You can beat that in two hours. That's and it's yeah. really good. That's one to drop in and play with you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wonderful game. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Um, also, uh, Duke Nukem 3D. Remember that game? It's getting an anniversary edition next month for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, it's coming out on October 11th, and it's going to be selling for 20 bucks. Uh, the the three D anniversary edition will feature updated graphics, new music, and new voice lines from Duke Nukem voice actor John St. John. So, are they removing the strippers? I think it will still be in place, actually. Oh, okay, here, we'll check that out. Yes. <laughs> who, who doesn't like strippers? <laughs> um, an in game commentary will also be included, and the game can also be played in its original 1996 form. Now, yeah, this is not Duke Nukem Forever, everyone. No. This is Duke Nukem 3D. Thankfully. Although, although Duke Nukem has definitely, certainly um, aged out. Uh, just like watching some of the old Attitude Era stuff makes you uncomfortable. I feel like so <laughs> with uh, Duke Nukem uh, 3D or any incarnation of the hero. Yeah. And uh, last headline: uh, Pokemon Go, uh, a buddy system, has been confirmed by Niantic. Uh, Niantic Labs confirmed fan speculation on their blog that the game will include a buddy Pokemon feature. And in this case, uh, Niantic says uh, you will be able to pick your favorite Pokemon from your collection to become your buddy. Uh, which will appear alongside your trainer on your profile screen, which will add helpful bonuses such as rewarding candy for just walking together with your Pokemon. That's adorable. And so you can change your Pokemon at any time. So you are no longer playing Pokemon Go, correct? No, I'm not. You Is the app completely removed from your phone? Uh, no, I still have it installed. Okay. Just not done with it. Yeah. Harris? Yeah, I still have it installed. I play way, 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 way less than I used to. Yeah. So. Carl Bird, uh, any Pokemon Go? No. Nah. Uh, it's been Angie Martinez is my voice <laughs> and work. Does Angie Martinez play? Uh, I did see she liked your Instagram post if I remember correctly. Did you uh, ask her if she played Pokemon Go? I I tried to reach out to her after that and nothing. Maybe she'll be a guest on the show. We have a new production set up. That'd be awesome. <laughs> um, Angie, I'll add us. us up. I yeah, I hit level twenty finally. Um, I just slow, I just started uh, evolving as many Pokemon as I could. I played a little bit of Mystic Seaport, caught a couple of guys I haven't before. I, I just, I do, oh, nice. I'm in, interested to just fill up the Pokedex. I don't want to battle crap, although now is probably the time to do so. Mm -hmm. um, but even the thing with the the buddy system, with the Pokemon walking with you, I don't feel like walking and having an app open on my phone as I do it. And I can hear myself talking. How weird, mm -hmm. Victor. I mean, you'll ever want to be here. What's Victor up? Victor just joined the Facebook live. <laughs> um, that's uh, the last bit of news. Um... Anything you guys want to add before we move on to our, uh, our nope. main topic, which I'm a little curious mm -hmm. about? All good. So the big thing uh, that just transpired this past weekend, as we all know, Labor Day, uh, which is the unofficial end of summer and uh, the unofficial end of the summer blockbuster season. Yep. Usually the summer blockbuster season is movie, after, you know, the big tentpole movies coming out, making oodles of money at the, block, at the blockbuster, I'm sorry, at the movie theater, at the cinemas. Uh, but this past year, Vic, and you know better than the rest of us, has seen a we, a strange decline in a lot yeah. of these uh, big movies that were summer sequels that did really, you know, the original movie did really well. You only expect the sequels to do better because that seems to be the case. Mm -hmm. uh, but for some reason, that has not happened this year. Uh, so we're going to go around, discuss the individual ones, one the ones that we saw, things, reasons as to why this might be occurring. Uh, I feel like we're a pretty good um, telltale sign for that because we are essentially the main demographic that, you know, 18 to 49 year old males of all different, uh, different ranges of race. Um, yep. And we're not seeing every all of these movies. I know I'm not. Uh, and I like to consider myself the most average person on the planet. And if I'm not going, ain't nobody going. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, take us through some of the movies here, Vic. What, um,. Are some of the ones that jumped out to you, some of them did well? Let's kind of discuss it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this year, uh, apparently there's a lot of, um, a lot of sequels, uh, remakes, reboots that have come out. And which usually do uh, pretty, which usually do pretty big gangbusters numbers. Yep. But this year, it's actually taken a decline, as you say. Um, apparently all the uh, sequels that have been thought to uh, m make a big buku box office uh, money, apparently they've flopped domestically. Or they haven't made as much money as other studios would like, even though they did kind of break even. And that's all they really did, just break even. They didn't really become these ginormous successes financially as, it's, as the studios have hoped. 
Uh, one example being uh, the Ghostbusters yeah. uh, uh, reboot, which came out in July, which uh, which was which had a budget of what, um, like 144 million. But wow. It, but it only right. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was the budget, but yet but it only grossed 126 million domestically, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, overseas it didn't do much better. It only did 92 million, so it did a total of uh, 219 million dollars. And the thing was, is like uh, Sony was expecting it to um, make at least like over 500 million worldwide, because you have to factor in marketing, which doubles the budget. So apparently, um, you, despite despite the uh, Good reviews that the film, positive review, reviews that the film got, especially from critics who are hoping, who are hoping that the, that the film would lead to like more female-led action films or things of or things of a similar. Which I totally support. Bridesmaids kicked ass. Yeah, but apparently, um, I think Sony, it's Sony that shot themselves in the foot because mm-hmm. they were basically um, when because when they when they released their YouTube trailer of the film back in March, which was the most widely disliked trailer movie trailer in YouTube history. Yep. They were actually uh, select selecting uh, the most vitriolic, hateful, misogynistic comments and leaving the legitimate legitimate ones off. They were deleting those, mm-hmm. so they were trying to spin this narrative of, "Oh well." Wait, they did that? Yeah, they were basically they were trying to fan the flames of, "Oh well, the reason, oh the reason why uh, people don't want to see Ghostbusters is because like these misogynistic basement dwelling forty something year old nerds don't want to see women in film in leading roles." What? And that's the and that was that was the story wow. that, that Sony was trying to spin hardcore. How much do these people get paid? Curious, man. Uh, <laughs> more than us, yeah. That's, that's, um, that's I don't know who's making those decisions. Yeah, that's terrible. Uh, I mean, um, I think I, I mean it's interesting. I would like to get a female's opinion on it. So if anyone Facebook living mm-hmm. has any thoughts on it, please please comment. Also, um, Sony, I am available. I will take way less money for oh whatever God. those guys are so telling much, you. I so will much give money. you way better advice for way less money. So I mean, the best part is not talking about it. You know, well. I mean, it's still oh, a good amount of money. I mean, I, I'm not going to say that I'll just do it for, like, yeah. free or anything like that. <laughs> just go make a good movie, and you'll be fine. Uh, or pay someone like me, like, $20 to be like, Ben-Hur? That movie that came out, like, 500 years ago? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, we're not making that. Um, but, my, you know, my favorite part of Batman v Superman was Wonder Woman. They really killed it in Star Wars. But, but a lot of it was just, these are going to they're gonna play great characters, and that's all you need. Yeah, um, and those are all really good actresses in that movie, but yeah. that just movie just didn't speak to me in any way. Yeah, like I didn't bother watching it. I'll probably it's like a red box movie. Like um, the the reviews that I saw basically kind of softball all the flaws. Like they like a, a lot of the positive re- reviews that I that I read kind of you know minimized the flaws of that movie, which would have which would have like been roasted right through the coals if it was like an all male cast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Maurice, yeah. I'd like to make a sequel to Independence Day. What do you think about that? Oh, you mean that movie that had a fantastic ending? Mm-hmm. And like, and Bill Pullman. Right. Like, what do you think? Not too bad at all. Wait, hold on. Sequel? Hold on. Important question. Mm-hmm. Is the biggest star of the original movie going to come back? Yes. The aliens will be there. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what was it? Go- uh, Jeff Goldblum? He'll be there. <laughs> star from... He will literally do anything. I offered him like a ham sandwich. He said yes. <laughs> from the fly and Jurassic Park. Right, that Jeff Goldblum from yeah. like twenty years ago. Yeah, mm-hmm. you remember him? Sure do. Twenty years ago, when I was ten. Will Smith said no, though. <laughs> what do um, you think about that? As much as someone who loves Independence Day, and we've talked about this in the previous episodes, and Victor has yelled at us, I would probably not see that. Nor did I. Oh, oh wait, but don't worry. That Hemsworth guy is going to be in it. Huh? Who's been in? Probably. Nothing besides the Hunger Games, which is like a thing. All right, I won't make that then. Okay. It was an expendable. Thanks for the advice. Who, Liam Hemsworth? Uh, the younger one. Oh yeah, that guy. Is that Liam? Chris yeah. is the yeah. older one. Yeah. 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 Liam, yeah. But yeah, I just that, that's a, that, that was a very quick board meeting session that Harris <laughs> and I would have for literally fifteen dollars an hour uh, in a ham sandwich, <laughs> and we just saved your literally like, Jeff Goldblum what, prices. What were those dollar figures, are Vic? Uh, apparently, Independence Day Resurgence. Uh, we d- yeah, and no, unfortunately, viewers, we did not have the Independence Day Everything episode. Uh, <laughs> uh, this the sequel had a budget of one hundred and sixty-five million. But Holy crap! Without Will Smith. Without Will That's Smith. That's crazy. But it only grossed one hundred and three million in the U.S. Mm. stateside. Wow! So mm. everyone's favorite movie of this past year, Deadpool, mm-hmm. only cost sixty million, sixty seventy million. Yeah, right. And that, it did look pretty good to me. Mm-hmm. 
why do these they, why do these movies cost so much? Oh man, apparently a lot of these studios they're relying more and more on the blockbusters to keep them afloat. Whereas before beforehand, the blockbusters used to be like um, used to be like the main event, but like a lot of mid budget films, like middle class films or even lower budget films like Independence, would actually would actually uh, keep the studios afloat for the most part. And then you have the big tent poles, mm -hmm. which would actually kind of tie everything together. But now it's the other way around, where blockbusters are the norm, and like the mid budget films. Yeah. Are are getting more and more scarce. It's it's, it's, it's not weird. Yeah. Well, it's not yeah. It's not sustainable. I mean, if you think about it. There were six Star Wars movies in out of in the forty years. Mm -hmm. Now there's going to be six within four. Yep. So that's crazy. Um, and how is yeah? How is that sustainable? I have no idea. Just look at the movie release schedule for 2018. Oh, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Comic book sequel on comic book sequel on comic book yeah, sequel. Yeah, and I can't see. And I think that the Harry Potter, one of the Harry Potters, is in there. Not Harry Potter, but the new wild. Fantastic creatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. I love Harry Potter all day. Uh, that you guys maybe take down by Deathly Hollows. It's actually behind the bookcase now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm Harry Potter all the way, but I have no interest in seeing that. Hmm. Uh, it, like, just because you said the name Dumbledore in the trailer doesn't really get my juices flowing. If you know what I'm saying. Well, I mean, it, it looks interesting. It does look interesting. I mean, it has two of your favorite actors. It has Ezra Miller and Colin Farrell. Oh, I'm no Colin longer Farrell's interested. Colin Farrell's a bad hilarious. <laughs> oh, Ezra Miller, what? Oh, man. The, the hobo flash. <laughs> yeah. the hippie the flash. flash. The homeless flash. So I just, just real quick, because Carl Bird, I see you as an everyman as well. You're looking at the, the same notes that we're looking at. How, per, percentage wise, of all these movies, how percentage ballpark it, how many of these have you seen? Three? Three of them, yeah. maybe? Yeah. 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 Yeah, three. Okay. Wow. And there's how many movies are? 20? <laughs> Fuck that. Five. Now, let, I mean, let's get to the nitty gritty of this thing, though. It's not about um, how much money or, you know, ah, the, these movies are made. It's not about the numbers. I mean, it is, but the real, you know root cause of, of the problem here, and I think that finally, finally, Hollywood is starting to realize it is this constant sequelitis and remaking, like you said, Ben-Hur. That is a perfect example. Yeah. Who the hell asked for a Ben-Hur remake? Honestly. Seriously. Charlton Heston. I don't think he did. <laughs> he looked at it and said, Mine's pretty good. I'm good. I'm set. Don't make it. Is he alive? I don't know. He's been dead for like almost eight years, I think. So they should have made it nine years ago. Yeah. No, they shouldn't have made it. They should have never made it. I, you know, the funny thing you is, know? how was that? Because you and I mentioned the same thing. A week before that movie dropped, there were trailers for it. I hadn't seen them ever. I think the studio knew it was going to be a bomb. That's probably a tax write off, more likely. Yeah. <laughs> Stop watching our Facebook Live, Vic! <laughs> I'm just checking the comments, I can't help it. <laughs> I got him right! That's what <laughs> Carl's for! Alright, alright. Listen, stop trying to steal problem. a job from another well, black man, Vic. Look, Vic, do you gonna get racial over this shit? <laughs> it's black on black crime right now, this is terrible. God damn it. <laughs> like Coach <Cora's> Prime Podcast. <laughs> Please. So, um. Yeah. Go on. Okay, Go on. Vic. Can you do me a favor and yeah. take us through some of these interesting articles that you've highlighted here? Give us the gist of what all of these outlets are are you know saying about this issue here because it has become kind of an epidemic here. Like it, it is a a issue that, from my point of view, from my perspective, from the everyman perspective, it's got Hollywood kind of in a panic because mm -hmm. they rely on these sequels. They, they need these to do well. And that was their easy bread and butter. Mm -hmm. You'd look at it and say, Alice, Alice uh, they did all right. Let's make, a, let's make another one of that. People would probably pay for that. <laughs> Suckers. Yeah. But then we didn't. Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think, I think Hollywood's uh, business model is starting to bite them in the ass now where they have a really profitable uh, film which is like based on a previous property, like a comic book film, or in this case, Alice in Wonderland. And it makes huge amounts of money. Like Alice in Wonderland, the original, made like one billion worldwide. Oh, wow. And so it's to a point where, we, where studios see all their, all their films, you know, making, making bank with, with their first installments. 
And then what they do is like they they green light sequels before they even hit pre production. Yeah. Like Terminator. Say, yeah, like Terminator, like Sight Unseen. They think, they figure well the name's gonna carry it, you know. Mm-hmm. They figure, well, you know, people know what Terminator is. People know Alice in Wonderland or Ninja Turtles. So people are going to flock in droves, whatever. We're going we're gonna to break even and make profit just on the name alone. And so they greenlight all these sequels, you know, without, without any real plans in place to actually have, a, re, have legitimate reasons for sequels in the first place. So now when you have these sequels coming around, you know, you know uh, viewers, us fans, moviegoers are just tired of it. It's like, well, it's been done. We've seen this before. You know, yeah. it's like... Or, or a lot of or a lot of people would be like, well, what's the, why should I go out of my way to see this at, at theaters? I could just watch it on Netflix or Redbox. Right. So that is know, true. We, the four K TVs are pretty sweet. <laughs> yep. <laughs> They're pretty. Fantastic. I mean, the first Alice in Wonderland, um, the one billion dollars. That the nostalgia factor is really starting to get them too, because everyone's like, oh, I haven't seen Alice in Wonderland live at action adaptation, whatever. Um, and Johnny yeah. Depp was at his greatest. Adaptation. Yeah, greatest adaptation. Yeah, and he, Johnny Depp was at his most powerful um, at that point. And then it comes to this thing where it's like, you know, do I really need another Alice in Wonderland? Do I? Do I really need another Alice in Wonderland? Because not even many people... It's like doing freaking uh, Charlie and the Shock Factory and then doing the one where the with the glass elevator. People don't even know that sequel exists. <laughs> Sorry for the... Uh, malfunction there. <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm still it working on it. It looks hilarious. It looks so long. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, that's a but yeah, that's a huge reason. It's like um, sequelitis, and also the fact that a lot a lot of viewers are starting to notice that the the the, the, the juiciest or the most interesting um, uh, properties are actually moving to television, especially with like Netflix and Hulu. Like for example, Str- Stranger Things. Like you wouldn't see that you wouldn't see that like as popular as it would be as if it were a feature film. If it were if it were a feature film, we kind of look at it as oh, this really cool independent feature, and nothing yeah. more. But as a TV show, people like, people can't stop talking about it. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll have an episode about that soon. Did anyone finish that? Yeah, I finished. I haven't even started. Yeah. What is it? Oh, Stranger, Stranger Things. Things. Oh yeah. yeah, I've been I've been saying I finished. Yeah, yeah. I, finished yeah. I, I, I thought that was the last season. one. But Vic, you're gonna get on that. So you can talk about that. That's it is it's good. You'll you will love it. Knowing you, you'll love yeah, it. Another, and, uh, definitely the old school. Another interesting or something that I find interesting about this whole thing is um, besides all these sequels and remakes failing and like it. it Another thing that's interesting is kind of it, it's hard to peg down the things that are going to succeed. So, for example, the Jungle Book um, live action mm. remake that that did gangbusters for Disney. It did. Yeah. And then you have the Legend of Tarzan, which was another major flop. Mm. So you would think that you know, kind of, be, those two things would be sort of in the same ballpark, like interest wise for people, and they weren't. Um, so, I mean, the, the jobs of these Hollywood executives is certainly getting, you know, harder. Um, I think people are starting to, to get more discerning tastes, which is a good thing. You know, um, I, I'm a sucker for superhero stuff. So like that stuff that I think, I feel like that's a different thing because that has a built in audience. Like I will see most things that are comic book related. It's not going to lie. Yeah, I'm me too. Straight up, I'll watch it. Yep. Um, but when you have a property like the Jungle Book or Tarzan, Something like that, or uh, you know, Warcraft, for example, is another interesting test case because Warcraft was huge here, and you would figure the Ameri- uh, American audience would flock to see that movie, and it flopped big time here. But here comes China to the rescue. <laughs> they also waited ten years too late to make a Warcraft. They sure movie. did. If they had made a World of Warcraft movie while that you know yeah. was in full swing, like yeah. when I was in college. Yeah. That that would have made so much money. I mean, with the well, time, China, China came through big time. Yeah, yeah. Warcraft. Like, I that just, movie succeeded. And I think they're greenlighting a sequel, yep, and, and they're like going China. to, yeah, and they're, they're going to like finance it more out of China. They're going to lean right. more towards Chinese tastes and cool. things like that. Like this is what we're going to start seeing because China, as of right now, is the second biggest uh, film market in the world. It'll be number one next year. It will be number one, correct? Yes. So that that's going to be real interesting to see how Hollywood balances that. You can do really crazy film credits in other countries. That's how Yui Bowl made movie after movie after movie after movie. Because in yeah. Germany, you can just get tons of credits and do bullshit after bullshit. How do you get all those yep. freaking movie rights? I have no idea. Mm-hmm. He made he took video game movies back a thousand years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I feel like so the, the funny thing with Legend of Tarzan is I actually was really intrigued by that. But with Jungle Book, it's a similar type similar enough i would say mm-hmm. where when legend of tarzan comes out a month later and not maybe a year later 
it might have been a different story. But it's just everyone's just inundated, inundated with all this stuff. I feel like I said that word wrong. Inundated. Inundated. There you go. Thank you. Um, it's you're screwed. But I will be. I do. I am not know as far as that, but at the same time, I don't feel like going to the movies and spending fifteen dollars on a ticket and popcorn to see. That's that. another good point. No. Yeah. And my my uh, forty eight inch four uh, K TV over here. Uh, pretty soon it's gonna be pretty safe. So yeah, I watch all that stuff. But I'm I'm really curious how the Jungle Book sequel does. Because that could hit the Alice Wonderland slog. Well, so Disney already greenlit a sequel for yes. that because there's also the Warner Brothers. WB is making yes. its own Jungle Book, and I expect that to bomb horribly. Yeah, straight up. When you have movies doing, I mean, I know that's that's been a thing before, like Deep Impact and Armageddon. But when you literally have this two studios doing the same story within the two years, come on. Yeah. And plus, okay. like, I, I feel kind of bad because it's directed by Andy Serkis. Yeah, I do enjoy Andy Serkis. Sucks. Who directed? I mean, um, who did? Uh, which studio did Legend of Tarzan? The one I came out this year. Because uh, it was it wasn't Disney, right? Uh, no, it was not Disney. Yeah. I did love their animated feature, however. Now, as you all know uh, from listening to the show, I am the biggest Star Wars fan you'll ever meet until you meet Victor. And I got Star Wars all over this place, but yeah. after six movies in six years, I'm, I don't think I'll be seeing every single one of those in the theater. I just can't do it. Hey, That's a lot. That's you're like, not the main ones? ones? Oh, the main ones, I'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> but maybe not the anthologies. Um, you're safe, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> but they care about me. Jeez. But it's just, it, it, it's overflow, and I can't keep up with everything. Before, when it was more, it was uh, event viewing, and now not so much. In my humble opinion. So are you going to go see Rogue One? Probably. For the show. Uh, but I, at the same time, I don't really... I don't... Because it's not like the mainline story, it's not too big a deal if I miss it. I just... I'm not clamoring for it. I am definitely clamoring for episode 8. Mm -hmm. But Rogue One... And also, you know, I got my EU... My old Expanded Universe goggles on. Although they never really still told the story of the first Death Star plan getting uh, stolen. Oh, I think they're talking about the Battlefront 1 or 2, but I guess not. Maybe that was 3. I'm sorry, the second Death Star. Or was it the Star Killer Base? I can't remember. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I'll definitely see it. And of course, Darth Vader's going to be in it. Mm -hmm. But, as a huge Star Wars fan, it's just, oh man. Literally a year after, and then next year, the year after, episode 8, and then a Han Solo film, and then episode 9, and then a Boba Fett film every single year. It was event viewing, and it's no longer event viewing. Mm -hmm. But, that's my take on it. I mean, the, the main takeaway from this is, is summer 2016 was a bad summer <laughs> yes. for film. Yes. Just all around it was bad, and I mean, if you looked at the slate just coming into the year, it wasn't, uh, you know, inspiring to begin with, and then you actually see how the reviews turned out. Like, I feel like the greater majority of these summer, uh, you know, so-called blockbusters uh, came out and had very mediocre reviews, like starting with Batman versus Superman, that I feel like that kind of kicked off the, this downswing of, uh, of, of the summer uh, film season, basically, and then it kind of never recovered from there. Like, you had your, your upticks, like Captain America um, was really good, and I know that there's a couple of indie uh, films that, that have come out that have really been good. I've been meaning to go see Kubo and the Two Strings. That looks really, really good. It is. But that did poorly itself, too, right? Yeah, it didn't do so well. It had a $60 million budget, but only grossed 36 Yeah, but it's hard wow, to, for that, that to even sucks. stay afloat with all the big stuff. But then you also had, you had Pete's Dragon. You also you had that, uh, Kubo and the Two Strings. Yeah. Yep. Um, what else? There was another movie. To, oh, the BFG. Yeah, that failed pretty hard. What the F is a BFG? You know what, Victor? Can you take us through yeah. some of the biggest flops of this summer, please? Yeah, uh, the BFG. Uh, that's uh, the big friendly giant based on uh, Rowan. A Steven well, Spielberg film. Yeah, Steven Spielberg directed it. And this is actually perhaps his biggest flop. Actually. Who is the BFG? Oh, wow. Big what is a BFG? Big Friendly Giant. I never heard that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's an enjoyable uh, children's flick. Mm -hmm. Awesome special effects. Uh, Who was the author? I'm sorry. Hmm? Who was the author again? Uh, Roland Roald Dahl. Oh, from... Uh, Willy Wonka. Wonka. Um, yeah, Willy yeah, Willy Wonka. 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 Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, the the film the film flopped hard because it had a budget of one hundred and forty million dollars, but it only grossed fifty four million domestically. Shit. Wow, that's yeah. a lot of money for an animated movie. Yeah, no, it was actually wise. live action with a lot, a lot of CG. Ah, okay. Yeah, that's actually his uh his biggest flop since um 
Munich. But I think part of the thing, too, is directors aren't getting the respect they used to have. We're saying, I have to see a Steven Spielberg movie. Yeah. I have to see it. Did you see, what was the, the Bridge know. of Spies? That was Steven Spielberg, right? Yeah, Bridge of Spies. Like, oh, but he's still like the old, he's clinging on to the old cinema. But he did, he yeah. did predict, him and George Lucas, surprisingly enough, that it was going to get too big for itself and it was going to explode on itself. Yeah. The box office. Yeah. It can't sustain. Unless you're Marvel. Uh, my question for you, Vic, um, and everyone really. Yeah. So Star Trek, they've had, you know, they just came out with uh, Beyond, and they've all, from what I've read, it has better reviews from In the Darkness, and mm-hmm. even, sometimes even the uh, original reboot. But their domestic roast has been going in foreign, but it's never going to be foreign box office for Star Trek. Has yeah. been going down and down and down. Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah, I think. 2009 was the first one, then 2013. It's been a couple of years. Yeah, like there's been like four years in between. That, the that seems like a good time. Um, I think, what, like, obviously the first Star Trek did Gangbusters. Mm-hmm. Uh, people were really interested in that. And then Into Darkness, um, it, ha- it, it had a spark when it started, but then it just, just kind of tapered off. Because um, people realized that, the, that that sequel wasn't as good as the original reboot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then Star Trek Beyond, which, um, which is actually almost as good as the first film. Uh, apparently, I guess people just didn't have much interest in it yeah. at that point. Like Cause, myself. Yeah, because it's been because it's been like what, like over five years since since the original Star Trek reboot. Two thousand nine. Yeah, yeah two thousand nine. So at this point, people are like, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This is, so back in two thousand nine, there wasn't this, you know, every movie every month. Carver, did you see the first two Star Treks? No. Oh, okay, never mind. I was gonna ask you why you didn't see the third one because I didn't, and I love Star Trek, but I just yeah. Yeah, your arc just kind of sour me. And I've said it before, J.J. Abrams. Not that great of a director. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, did uh, he direct great. this latest one? No. I thought it was no. Justin no. Lin. No, Justin Lin directed this. Was, this was, okay. uh, Zero Faster. Because I, I did not see the second one in theaters yeah. either, and I have not seen this third one. But um, I didn't see the second one because of the middling reviews, mm-hmm. and yeah. I feel like um, a lot of times it's kind of even if you you know rebound outside of it having sort of. Um, Great word of mouth, you know, sometimes will will help a film franchise rebound. I feel like um, the Fast and the Furious kind of did that, yeah. where it wasn't so much reviews or or like a, a you know journalistic community. It was more like a fan community that really boosted those films back up after their couple of uh, disasters in, in Tokyo Drift and Too Fast, Too Furious. Um, it, it, it's hard to recover from a, a bad sequel. Like it leaves a yeah. bad taste in the viewer's mouth. So even if um, you know, you come out with a good product on the third go around, it's still, you know, you're still looking back and remembering that crappy second movie. Um, and, and, you know, it causes a lot of people to sort of tune out and, and, and not come back for you. Yeah. Um, now, are there any other films, um, Victor, that, that were, were the, the, the huge, like I see Ben-Hur on here, I mean... Star Trek Beyond, the BFG, Tarzan, like we've said, Independence Day was a huge flop. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I'm looking at the numbers here, and a lot of these sort of recouped their gross, uh, you know, with the international um, box office. But that doesn't cover all the marketing, you know, uh, money and all that stuff. So realistically... So the one dollar Ben Hur spent? All right. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, you know, on the back end, realistically, even though it looks like they turned a profit, though those movies are still probably big failures yeah. and, and big losses for their studios. I also read today uh, that for China, even though people say, oh, it's going to... It always has China. Mm-hmm. One of the big things, Suicide Squad, they couldn't even open in China. Yeah. But you get even less receipts out of China. You get 25%, yeah. where it's a little bit higher in America yeah. and uh, elsewhere. So you can't always rely on China, uh, even when they become the number one biggest which is kind of crazy. Warcraft, obviously, they just did insane money there, but mm-hmm. they got they love their Warcraft down there, so oh, yeah. that's crazy. Um, one of the big things, too, I think, is marketing, um, because one of the movies, um, oh God, I can't remember the name, it was a Disney, it was like the beginning of this whole trend where they had a big, huge, gigantic blockbuster. It was a really old sci-fi movie, and it did terrible. John Carter. Yeah. John Carter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The it was ter- it was the promotion was terrible. Um and then I saw the movie itself, John Carter from Mars is which is what it's based off of. And it was a really good movie. Mm-hmm. Really good. I enjoyed it immensely. The marketing was awful. Yeah. First it was called John Carter. Mm-hmm. Might as well be just called John Smith. Yeah. <laughs> and it took place on like alien planets. You never really saw a lot of that or some of the humor that was behind it, and Disney just mucked it up, yeah. in my opinion. Uh, now, I, I, just going on the, on the second sheet here, I find um, some interesting data. 
Um, these were the big 2016 box office successes. Now, interesting thing is, the failures is a you know quite a bit bigger list than these uh successes these flops. Nice yeah. I just didn't see that. So um the the big successes were Captain America Civil War. Again, it was a sequel, but it was a really well made, well acted movie in the Marvel universe. So first off, you have yeah. your built in audience, then it's an actual good movie. Um and that grossed over a billion dollars. Why? All the things I just said. The, you know, you know, everything just converged. Finding Dory, again, Pixar, built-in audience, really awesome movie, so, you know, you can expect quality. I am so, kind of surprised, uh, oh, it almost hit a billion, it's close, but yeah. I would think they would hit. Yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. But that's funny, they expect one billion now, which is right. wild, I'm right. excited. Suicide Squad, which, that's interesting, wow, that was a, that was a decent success, huh? I thought they had yeah. to hit 700, 800 to even break even. I mean, it's pretty close to seven. Yeah. So even, that's good. Even, even good enough to WB? Mm. Maybe. We'll have to find out. I'm guessing they're going to put out a sequel to that because it did pretty well by yeah. these numbers. Uh, Who knows what the DCEU <laughs> even looks like now? I mean, I'm glad. I'm, I, I'm glad that it, it will continue. Yeah. Um, and if you, I you, agree. Yes, just, just... Okay. So, like, uh, Secret Life of Pets, that's... Wow. That's I like that crazy. Like the trailer. I never saw yeah. that. Yeah, I never saw that movie then. I never heard anyone talk about it. So, yeah. Yeah. that's crazy. The Conjuring 2... Lights out, don't breathe. Central intelligence, really? Yeah, Central so intelligence. Rock will just be good. Anything. Did you see that I did. So here's Colbert. That, now that was that was a um, a non sequel, non. It was an original star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and out of the other several movies you saw, was that the most enjoyable you've seen? No, Civil War was the most enjoyable. Okay. But I did enjoy Central Intelligence. Yep. Yeah. How did Rock do? He was actually funnier than Kevin Hart. <laughs> wow. I like that. That's yeah. weird. But I remember, see, because that's the thing that Dwayne Johnson, The Rock, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is really good at with that social media everything. Yeah. It's Because I follow him on everything pretty much, but it's on his Twitter nonstop, YouTube, he's on Snapchat now, he's everywhere. And he just... Kevin Hart as well, crap. so he yeah. had like th those two big uh, social media powerhouses, and they have really in, in huge fan bases. Yeah. They're going to support him. Like, you're going to be one day, Colbert. One day. Social media <laughs> powerhouse. <laughs> Now, what do you guys think? So that that that's a good list of all of the. But the know, main thing, though, before before we move on, like Colbert just said, that was a good movie. Mm -hmm. That's the most important part. Make a good yeah. movie, people will come. Get the rocks in it. Right. I mean, a lot of these are, are originals. Um, you know, you Suicide Squad was the Superman. first installment. That's March. Uh, uh, Lights Out, Don't Breathe, Central Intelligence, Bad Moms, oh Sausage Party. Those were all original films. Yes. Not sequels or, or you know, remakes of something uh, from the past. So um, my question is, after all of this big fallout and how it's got Hollywood executives sort of scrambling for answers here, um, what's the answer, you guys? What, what do you think this means for the filmmaking business going forward? More superhero movies, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That would be the wrong I feel like way to they're go. They're just going to keep throwing. I mean, I I feel like movie executives, uh, you can see the, this with a lot of streaming stuff, is they're really slow to catch on to trends. Mm -hmm. So I think it's going to be a while before the... There's going to be at least three or four more summer seasons of this before they start to really focus on it. Because, I mean, a lot of this stuff broke even, hurt a little bit, but not outrageous enough where it was like 20 Ben Hur's. I just find Ben Hur just hilarious. <laughs> just the, fact that someone, the fact that I had to go through the entire process of someone writing a script, having it, you know, approved, then going to an executive, it's just, it blows my mind. Yeah. Um, and someone, for like Jason Bourne, I love the first Bourne movies, I read all the books, um, but I like endings as well, and I just, I, so Ultimatum ended really well. It's like, do I need to know what happened to Jason Bourne 15 years later? Not really. But it still did good without me, so. But I feel like <laughs> next gen Jason Bourne might not do so well. Nostalgia's good to a point, and then you just get bombarded with it. And, oh, I haven't seen the Ninja Turtles in 15 years. Do I need to see them two years later? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. So we'll see. I am not a... I, I mean, I feel like I, I... I can't really come up with great ideas, but I can tell you what's terrible ideas. So, hey, Maurice, would you see this? No? Okay, don't green light it. <laughs> yeah, plus I think that uh, studios should uh, take care and... Uh, and promoting more of their mid-budget movies, ones that don't fall under superhero spectacles or like things based on like uh, comic book adaptations or things like that. Because uh, the mid-budget movies are the, are the movies that are going to keep people talking. 
you know, just as much, if not more so, than the than the big comic book tentpole releases. Mm -hmm. You know, because without because if you just have all all spectacle and none of the smaller intimate uh, dramas, you know, and, and I'm not talking about just the awards season like in the fall, then you're gonna have like a top heavy top heavy movie market where people just expect spectacle all the, all the time to the point where they'll ignore anything that's mid budget or anything that's uh, independent. They'll look at that as just niche. Yeah. And, they'll, and, they'll, and those will be the films which will be really, really great films, which could even be classics even uh, a few years from now. But they'll be relegated to like Netflix, something that you find on Netflix or something that you'll have to discover if you go make a trip to the library in yeah. a few years. And please, no more dystopian futures starring teenagers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh the first Hunger, Game, Hunger Games, you know, they kind of struck gold with that. Uh, and then they just... Oh God! Everywhere, and then what was that? Ascendant, Descendant, Divergent, Divergent. Now the last one's gonna be like a TV show, and none of the actors even knew about it. Wow, really? Yeah, they're not even gonna yeah. release like part two, whatever they wow. crap they called it. Oh, that's crazy! Yeah. I don't know anybody who's seen any of those. <laughs> 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 yeah. Either. But yeah, they had the the la they're gonna do the same thing that other movies do, split it into two parts. But they're gonna call it two different things, and then mm. it, the last one didn't do so well, mm. so they're gonna turn it into a movie or a TV series and spin it off or something. But uh, bleh, bleh. Mm. Spider-Man was the beginning. I, I think it's, like you said, where immediately we might not see uh, the, the, the changes coming from this, but uh, because all the slates are, are set so far in advance, it's like three years in advance, so there's movies already scheduled for 2019, 2020. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm hoping that they, they learn their lessons and they no longer greenlight Ben Hur's moving forward or they, they see a, a you know a movie that does well like Alice uh, in Wonderland for example and instead of just green lighting you know a concept that's going to be hey let's just give them exactly what we gave them the first time around maybe have a creative thought for the sequel maybe don't just bring back Johnny Depp in a friggin costume again you know what we're tired of that sorry Johnny Depp I love you man but be yourself brah mm -hmm. yeah and um that all that personal stuff kind of caught you know caught up people a little bit too there too that was really bad timing for all of that with his wife or now ex-wife and all the allegations against them Ooh. yeah mm. uh, that was bad timing try to be a better person Johnny Depp <laughs> <laughs> everyone just be better just be better so be, just, don't be a wiener Rule I number just one. want good movies I yeah. like film I enjoy watching a good riveting tale I tell, tell me one I show me one. I enjoy nostalgia as much as the next person, like I mentioned earlier. Same thing with um, the, the one you just mentioned, Alice in Wonderland. Oh, I haven't seen Alice in Wonderland in a very long time. Awesome. Do I need it again another year later? That's why I'm glad they haven't done that uh, Wizard of Oz sequel to the one they just did recently, the prequel kind of deal, mm -hmm. because I had my fill of this nostalgia. I don't really need it again All right. for another 50 years. Right. Yeah, and... Uh, and, and last word, you know, for the audience, you know, take more chances, see more different things besides just the uh, mainstream, big budget, you know, popular releases, you know? But stretch I, out, stretch out of your comfort zone. But I love the MCU so much. <laughs> you know, I mean, go, go, go see Kubo and the Two Strings. Go see the Neon Demon. Go see Swiss Army Man. I'm still, I, waiting, go, I'm still waiting for my Carl Bird summary for that. Oh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot all about that. <laughs> Uh, Carl Burr, before we move on, are there any final thoughts, Eris? I just, I know, just what I said, man. I'm yeah. hoping, I'm hoping this brings about some change, because, I mean, some of this stuff looks just like, I, I, I like that, that Jungle Book remake was, yeah. was made, or that live you're, action. Are you ready for a sequel? It was really good. Not really, yeah. to be quite honest with you. Like, I'm good with the one that it's they coming. had. I'm sure it is. <laughs> I will probably, unless that trailer blows me away, I will be a lot less interested in it. Um, but that, that's the thing. They got to strike a balance. Like, yes, you can get me with nostalgia. You only get me once. Yeah. But the second one better be something good. Like switch it up on me. Mm -hmm. Give me something original. Give me something cool in that universe. I already like the universe. Maybe bring some new thought into it. Don't just do the same thing you did the first time. Like aliens attacking earth. Right. Hey, how that happened. We, we that was cool. Aliens. People liked that 20 years ago. Let's do it again. Let's, <laughs> how about we attack the aliens? I'm cool with that. Yeah. That's different. Well, that would be a spoiler, actually, I was going to say. For I think episode. I know what you're going to say. Yeah, apparently a resurgence from what I read sequel baits hard. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that's another problem, too, that we didn't really? get to, which wow. we talked about in the past. The sequel baiting is, like, with Terminator. Just make one movie. Make a standalone movie. You don't need 
all these tricks and tips for the next move. Just make one. Right. And then work on the next. We've talked about that before. Uh, Carl Bird, I'm sorry. We're going to give you that mic next week, Carl Bird. I promise. You'll be interjecting way more. But any, any uh, thoughts you had? You've only seen a few of these movies. Literally just kind of just listen to the fans. I mean, it seems like it's just a lot of these movies as just suits and, you know, business suits who think they know everything. Just listen to the fans, you know, and take that chance. We know what we want to see. That was really eloquent, Carl Bird. <laughs> I really enjoyed that summary. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have any uh, um, answers to last week's question of the week? Um, no. <laughs> oh. Oh. No, we had no, we had nothing. I have my phone's doing the Facebook Live. Oh, so that's I right. Can't I think we had some come in the last second there, but we'll get to it next week. <laughs> <laughs> we'll plan that out better. Uh, we do have one email from a fan of the friend of the show, John Grace, who was here a couple weeks ago, who is a big Overwatcher. Uh, don't worry, I will read this nice and slow for everyone. See you, bitch. <laughs> Happy fiftieth. Hey all. Overwatch is still dominating my life. And I fear that the neighbors will soon call the police. <laughs> End of full season starting up. Where do you see the Patriots going this season? I'm a giant homer asshole. So I'm saying Jimmy goes 4 and fucking 0. Oh. Tom Brady comes back and goes 12 and 0. Oh, and we storm all the way to the Super Bowl and went 40 nothing. Just writing this at 8.11 p.m. on 9.6.16 during your recording, presumably. Yeah, John, we're on Facebook Live, jerk. Hopefully you get it in time. Just wanted to say thanks for all the great shows, all the laughs, and allowing me to come on the show now and then to waste everyone's time. <laughs> Love, John. Thank you, John. We appreciate thanks, John. your support from episode one. Absolutely. We also, I you. enjoy your Overwatch fandom. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, there might be more Overwatch talks coming in the coming weeks, months, years, episode 500. It's not going away. Yeah. This is not Blizzard. Not Blizzard will keep that corpse rolling. Right. After it's dead. <laughs> And then you two hobos finally sign on and play. It's got to get a PlayStation in there. We'll get you, Carl Bird. Do you have a question you want to ask? When that Neo week? comes out, Carl. Yeah. Um, wait, what was that? When that PlayStation Neo comes out, just get that. I'm Harris and I will have one on the market. Yeah, Carl, I'll sell you mine. <laughs> it's been I'm in my house, so that thing. means you got to pay like a premium. <laughs> <laughs> Did you uh, want to ask anything for next week? I really have not written anything down. There's, everything's just in my phone. You know, so, I was just, kind of do, do you remember when you said Carl was the best social media manager in the planet? Did you remember that? <laughs> Listen, I, I got things falling off the walls. Carl Bird Listen, doesn't I'm not saying you're, I didn't I'm not call you the best anything. That's a good you're question. literally the most average man in the world. You said it yourself. <laughs> You said you're not, you already said you're not the best. That is true. This is an average podcast. I have average walls, average phone things. That's, that's perfectly average. I think we did okay. You know, growing pains, we'll get there going down. And Carl we'll, get, Bird, we'll get there. Carl Bird, you did a great job putting together our commercial earlier today. We all appreciate that. That was yeah. really slick. I can't even type two words hey, together. Will we so. be back on Facebook Live? Is that, that going to be a thing? I don't see why not. Oh, we're, we're gonna get them some feedback. Correspond podcast at gmail dot com. Yeah, I'm sure, sure we'll get here. better. We'll get better at it. Instagram. We'll, we will interact more with our live audience. Yeah. This is. I mean, it took us fifty episodes to get freaking more than one mic. Maybe Carl yeah. won't drop us in the middle of the live feed next that, time. That was the Wi. That was the Wi Fi, Maurice. Average, average Wi Fi. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're getting yeah we're getting better. Like I said, it took us fifty episodes to get a sound mixer. I don't even know what that existed. So. Episode 500, we'll maybe talk to one of our listeners. Uh, episode 500, we'll be on MTV. That's right. <laughs> Public access, ladies and gentlemen. I think you can pay for that. It'd be fantastic. We'll, uh, be, on, but we'll be on MTV. I like that, Carl. Big dreams, Carl. I love it. <laughs> Any uh, closing it. thoughts, gentlemen? Uh, thank you for sticking with us for everyone that's, uh, that, that's listening to the show. Um, you know, just coming on every week and listening to us talk. Crap for an hour, hour and a half, sometimes two hours. <laughs> Not anymore, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, we appreciate all of you. Thank you to the guys who uh, have been with us since day one. Uh, the guys who email in, guys and gals, I should say. Guys and gals who email in, come on the show, give us those five-star reviews. We appreciate y'all. Uh, you know who you are. Um, stick with us. It's going to be, uh, it's, it's been a wild ride. It'll continue to be, and everything will just continue to get better. Yeah, uh, thank you to all our all our all of our listeners and all of our guests that have been on the show. Uh, you make our show awesome, uh, and your feedback and your likes on Facebook and whatnot. 
Uh, we hope to we hope to produce fifty more episodes of goodness and magic mm -hmm. and wonderfulness uh, for you all. And uh, it's been a wild, it's been a wild and crazy ride, and it's been awesome every step of the way. So we hope to be even more awesome and more crazier uh, you go moving forward. So yeah, it's awesome. I like it, Gobert. Well, I wasn't here in the beginning. I didn't came. I came in what episode twenty something. I don't know. But it's been just a pleasure working with y'all. And it will be continue, continue to be a pleasure. Thank you to all the followers, all the listeners, just you know sticking with us. And like I said, like Aris said, we will be we will get better, bigger and better. Cover now put social media manager on his resume, so you all helped him out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this has been really great. Last fifty episodes made uh, I was buddies with Aris, but we've only gotten better friends. And uh, Carl Bird and Vic made really good friends. I love it. I love you guys. Love everyone. Um, so if you guys say we do it for the fans, I do it for myself. Screw you guys. <laughs> just kidding. I do it for the fun and just kind of chatting around. It's a, it's a good time. And uh, I like talking with other people about it. It's, it's great. Everyone's like, oh, I'm always doing the same thing. I'm doing the same. Try something different. Break out. I'm, I look ridiculous on Facebook Live, but I don't care. I love it. Yeah, you uh, do. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, just uh, get out of your comfort zone. Do something fun. Do something crazy. Even if you look stupid, trust me, I'm a big proponent of it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Cody's from podcast at gmail.com. Thoughts, reviews, five star, most appreciate it. Helps people find us, and uh, we'll just grow even more, and I'll get even more friends. Yeah. Because I collect friends. Yeah. But Follow us on social media. Give us them five star reviews on iTunes, please. And next week, we'll be talking comic books. Oh. Comic books next week. Whoa. Yeah. So All right. Get, so declaration? That's yeah. official? That is official. Man, I got a lot of catching up yep. to do. So yes, you do. So <laughs> Star Wars myself. Um, some of the volumes that came out for Vader and Star Wars, the main series. So, yeah. If you have any uh, comic questions, get ahead of it. Twitter, Facebook, you know where to find us. Later, nerds. I'd just like to put it on the record that it was my family that showed the most love <laughs> All right. today on episode 50. I have Later, nerds. I have family, too. Clearly the best. Obviously the best. Later, nerds. <laughs> Peace out, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Later. Peace out, Facebook Live. <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Till next time. <laughs>